Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. I'm Chema. And I'm Eddie. Reviewing Elf. This is the rollback. <laughs> What's up, dude? Dude. It's nice to like see you, like actually <laughs> see you. So, folks, this is all courtesy of uh, my <laughs> wife and my mother because I don't spend money on myself. They bought me an HD camera, a ring light, and this new mic. So if I sound better, that's why. I blame my loved ones. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is how I actually sound and how I actually look like. I'm sorry. You have a you have a terrible habit of spending money on other people and never on yourself. <laughs> One day yeah. I'll tell the story of how it was to go watch Wonder Woman with you in the in the theaters because <laughs> that was up. I, ha- I think I had like a comatose diabetic, um, <laughs> like thing the next day it was kind of amazing I mean, how often do we ever go to the movies i think that was only what the second or third time we ever went together yeah fucking I mean, splurge yeah i was fun you want um, the medium you, you want the medium popcorn <laughs> we're getting the large motherfucker <laughs> oh if only we could do that for wonder woman too oh, oh God. Shit. Uh, that's another video okay so now you've made me sad <laughs> uh, well <laughs> good thing good thing we're about to talk about probably one of the best feel good movies of the past years. I'd say it might be the most modern Christmas classic actually. I don't It might be the it, it it is the film equivalent of Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. It's like the last but like less annoying though. The last Oh yeah, you you work retail. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a different beast for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about John Favreau's directorial um effort elf i think uh if you watch this movie from like a completely technical standpoint this is the movie that as a director you want to have made because it's both a critical success and a commercial success and it cements you as a voice to be heard and i think that's an important thing to point out here because John Favreau is now, you know, a superstar. He's doing Mandalorian. He's doing the, the Disney live action remakes. He's, uh, he was on, he was on Friends. You know, he, he, he's kind of, you know, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's, right everywhere. Now. he's everywhere. And with good reason, you know, we, when they announce something and they're like, oh, John Favreau's in charge. We're like, oh, we trust him. And, he's, he's earned that right though. Like through yeah. like everything he's done, like um, before this movie, the only, uh, I think this was only his second directed film. His first one was made, like it's called Made. It's a yeah. rate. It's a hard R like movie about like I think it's gambling or something. So yeah. like this was like a completely in the other fucking direction, but yeah, it works. It totally works, and it works because you have very talented people working on it. You have Will Ferrell straight out of SNL, you know, and you you think you think Will Ferrell, you think very crass, very loud humor, and this is just a complete, also a complete one eighty. You know, he's doing a very family friendly performance that's not you know dumb Difficult. it's actually very funny yeah. well well if you notice um uh, well i don't know if you're aware of this one of the first facts that I, i'm aware of about this film uh this film was fun to research so guess who was originally they originally wanted for the movie because they had been uh th- this script had been around since 1993 like just floating <laughs> like someone was trying to get it done i think i know exactly who it was i think it was jim carrey Yes, yes. Imagine Jim fucking Carrey, that Jim Carrey, as Buddy the Elf. Ninety three Jim Carrey. So you know, liar, liar, Jim Carrey. Pre, pre just Grinch. Pre yeah. Ace Ventura, Jim Carrey. Actually, pre Ace Ventura, Jim Carrey. Yeah. He he passed on it right before they filmed uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Honestly, you know, Jim Carrey could have probably done Elf, but I don't think Will Ferrell could have done Ace Ventura. So that's. I- <laughs> think I about would, that i mean god but they're just such uh they're both different actors you know their kind of chemistry the manner in which they do things i mean they're both character actors but also um i don't know if it would have worked the same because like wolf Earl, uh he said when making when making elf a lot of his characters on snl were very uh self self-isolated does that make sense like yeah. they were in their own little worlds so he had to apply that to Buddy, and I think that's the only reason Buddy is so funny and happy and go lucky. You know what I mean? I totally. don't think Jim Carrey could have done that. I maybe I just I, I didn't see it. Probably. Um, let me do a little uh, little uh, synopsis for Elf. Um, 
When young Buddy falls into Santa's gift sack on Christmas Eve, he's transported back to the North Pole and raised as a toy-making elf by Santa's helpers. But as he grows into adulthood, he can't shake the nagging feeling that he doesn't belong. Buddy bows to visit Manhattan and find his real dad, a workaholic book publisher. So that's the story. That's the plot. We have a, a very, very funny comedian at the lead. We have a very talented director you know, leading everything in. And we have a very interesting premise for a movie that's just trying to be a funny Christmas film. And in my opinion, it it, it hits it out of the park. I, I don't think there's, I, I, I was just watching it right now, like, like right before mm-hmm. uh, recording this. And I hadn't seen this movie. Like, uh, I think this is one of those movies that a lot of people grow up with because this, this is uh, this is movies like 17 years old. It came out in 2003. Mm-hmm. And I remember when you and I were doing FBA, you told me about this movie. You, you were like, yo, I love this movie. I, I watched it like on Christmas. I watched it when I was like paying my room. I, I, you told me like a story when yeah. you were watching it. Like, <laughs> it's the same your story. Or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember you telling me that. And I remember thinking, I've never seen this, 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 this damn movie. And then I finally watched it uh, that year and I, oh God, it was so funny. It was so funny. And <laughs> I was and I, I was working at a service desk at our university. And there were, and a lot of students passed through there like daily. So what I used to do is they used to give us a speaker and we used to play music through there. And, you know, it was Christmas. So we were playing Christmas songs, but every couple of songs I would, I would include like the the little sound bite of Buddy saying Santa, oh my god, and just like every couple of songs just to break the monotony, and everyone would always just break immediately when that would happen, like, and it would work. I mean, <laughs> it was just really, it was just really funny. And, oh. Yeah, and I kind of regret not growing up with this movie, and and especially now. <laughs> Now that I've been, now that I just rewatched it, I'm like, damn, this is a funny movie. <laughs> well, see, I think it's a great movie when you're a kid, but it's one of those. It's like, a, it's like kind of like a Cartoon Network TV show. You pick yeah. up a lot more of the jokes the older you get. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, like the like the lingerie thing that he gives his dad. I didn't <laughs> get special it. Special someone. Like, yeah, yeah, I didn't get it. I was just like, okay, like that's a dumb gift. It was like candy or something. And then now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, that's really inappropriate. It grows up with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and this movie's timeless. Like, uh, and I know it's only 17 years old, but a lot of the jokes still hit 17 years later, you know? They haven't aged bad. You, you know how sometimes you watch like an old show or an old movie and they're like, can't really make that joke anymore. There's no <laughs> yeah. jokes here. I don't think, except for like maybe the joke they pull on 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 Peter Dinklage. I mean, I don't know if maybe they could do that again, uh, but but even then, I feel like I don't think the jokes in this movie have aged bad. If anything, I think no. I think I think you could watch this to like the most liberal person you know, and they'll get a kick out of it. I mean, I, <laughs> I think it's still a super funny, funny movie, and and it's got a lot of scenes that, like you said, you know, they do they do grow, grow up with you. There, there are a lot of scenes that. Like I said, I didn't watch this growing up, but while watching it now, I'm like, damn, this is. <laughs> I don't know right. if I would have gotten it like when I was a kid, but I think a lot of it would have been pretty good. Um, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoy it so much now. Yeah, and, and 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 like I said, like this is a movie that I feel like I could watch with family. I could watch with younger uh, cousins or something. And yeah, some jokes are gonna fly over their heads, but I think it's the same as if you show them like Shrek. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Also, you don't have yeah. to be worried about exposing them to something that's really inappropriate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, nothing, nothing too crazy. Other than the lingerie, you know, everything else is pretty tame. Which legit, I thought that was candy when he was taking it out because it was, it's like red and white. I'm like, fucking peppermint. Why would you give your dad peppermint stuff? It's which for a special someone? <laughs> which nine year old Eddie? I was stupid. So let's be fair. <laughs> also, in the, in this movie's defense. It's actually the third highest grossing Christmas movie of all time. Really? Yep. What are the first good. two? Like Love Actually and what else? I have no idea. I know, though, if you include Home Alone 1 and 2, it drops down to number five. So we don't talk Damn. About those. Uh, <laughs> but so uh, another fun thing. Um, so going through from the beginning of the film, like just a few of the scenes. Yeah. Um, there's two things, uh, two funny things I want to tell you. One, you know the scene when he's playing with the, uh, with the Jack in the Box? Yeah. And, it just, and it like it breaks and he's like writing things out and it like pops up. Yeah. 
that was real. No they way. Had, yeah, no, no. See, John Favreau had one made with the remote control thing so he could delay it. And so, like, Will Ferrell was just like, oh, okay, I guess it's busted. So, right, 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 right. Then, yeah. boom, he pops it. And that, that freak out was real. Will Ferrell's like, oh, just like, it was real. It was, that was real. Uh, <laughs> John Favreau is a fucking treasure, man. The, the older I get, the more I realize how much he is. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, apparently, they shot a scene, but they didn't include it in the final cut of uh, them playing elf hockey, apparently, just to show how dominant and bigger buddy is than all the other elves they filmed it but they cut it because they're like it kind of breaks the pace of the opening movie if they accept him and cheer for him <laughs> speaking of the of the opening movie of, of the opening section because i need to talk about that section that is one of those things that i was a little worried about when i first saw it because i'm like okay how how has this aged and it still looks amazing. That forced perspective thing of making it, everyone look smaller than he is, including Bob Newhart, who plays Papa Elf. Yes. Um, they, it still looks great 17 yeah. years later. And that's what I, that's why I love practical effects. This is why I love practical effects because you can see it like years later and it still looks amazing. You can, right. yeah. And, and the same thing with the claymation with the, with the animals outside when, when the, that's when he's leaving in the ice and the, the, the narwhal comes out and he's like, oh, buddy, hope you see you dead. That was uh, John Mr. Favreau, narwhal. too. That was John Favreau. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. He was like, bye, Mr. Narwhal. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me every single time. He's like, bye, Mr. Narwhal. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why it gets me, but it does. Um, yeah. But that, that whole initial section. I still cannot believe that that's from a movie from 17 years ago because there's movies. Mm -hmm. I just watched uh, Noel on Disney Plus with Anna Kendrick and and Bill Hader, which is a fine movie, but the effects are terrible. They're not good. They're not good effects. They yeah. they, they break the pacing and they break a lot of a, a lot of what the film is trying to do. And in this one, they're 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 like magic. Okay, this is why Baby Yoda looks fantastic right now. This is this was practice for when Favreau built that thing for the Mandalorian. Okay, that's that was him just oh god because that whole initial section, the 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 Force perspective, the the workshop, uh, the house, uh, all those sections still looks great. It still looks amazing. Well, I mean, even the part where Buddy is sitting on his dad's legs. Yeah. Uh, Force perspective. They sat Will Ferrell on top of a kid, and you know there was a brace or whatever, and they had to time the kids' movements with uh, with the father's movements. Yeah, with Newhart's yeah. movements, just to make sure like the foot thing and all that. Like he's like, oh god, like you know yeah. all that stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. Apparently, so this film, John Favreau's whole thing was like, we're gonna use as little CGI as we possibly fucking can, mm -hmm. and they did. You know, this yeah. very. Like even even with Santa with Santa's uh, sleigh is riding, they filmed the sleigh and they added the CGI background and they added the CGI reindeer. But when yeah. those reindeer are like in Central Park, nope, real reindeer. Yeah. Um. The only other time that I remember that they did use CGI was when the uh, the snow was falling. That's the only other time that you know you can kind of see it, but yeah, yeah, but it doesn't take you out because it fits the rest of the background and it, and it fits it, it fits all the aesthetic that's that that's present there. You know, so it never takes you out. It always it always works. Yeah. By the way, I apologize for that yawn, folks. It is currently two a.m. when we are filming this, right, Chima? It's two I mean, a.m. Sure. Well, we'll say that <laughs> we we can edit it to make it to, to make it look like that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Speaking of uh, speaking of Newhart, because I I'm a Bob Newhart fan. I love his his sitcom Newhart. I think he's a super funny comedian. Oh, he's a big and deal. He's a super. He won. Bob Newhart won the first Grammy on the first Grammys. He won the first Grammy for album, album of the year, and it was for a comedy album. Really? Yes. Bob Newhart. So he's he's a, he he always talks like that. He always talks in a very deadpan sort of way, but he's super funny. And his sitcom Newhart was him being a therapist, and it was really really the, funny. The Bob Newhart show is a big. Thing That's the too. one. Huh? I didn't realize this guy was such a big deal. He was such, he's such a big deal. He's and he's super funny, and, and and that deadpan really really works, especially in this movie. When I was rewatching it right now, I hadn't seen it in the movie for a couple of years. I kind of forgot that he was in there, and when I because his voice is the first voice that he that you hear, and he's narrating throughout the whole film, 
And his narration really fits this kind of storytelling. This is kind of a little sarcastic, but very, very sweet. I, th- I think he he always play he plays like, like a very nice uh, father figure to Buddy. Um, speaking of him and the and the supporting cast, we got to talk about twenty four year old blonde. Zoe de Chanel. Dude, that threw me off. I didn't realize it was her until years later. Nobody real apparently nobody realized that's Zoe de Chanel. It's because she doesn't have any bangs. You can't tell. I mean, yeah. I recognize the voice, but like, dude. Her. <laughs> somebody was... point somebody pointed out that, that she kind of sounds like Kermit the Frog, and I cannot stop thinking about that ever since. She does. I think that's a bit on New Girl, actually. I think she does uh, that really? bit on New Girl. I think I don't remember that. Uh, and I love New Girl. I I, I love Soy the Chanel. I, I, I'm a fan. So, uh, yeah, I am too. Except for the happening, uh, the happening. Uh, yeah, but we don't blame that on her. No, that wasn't entirely her fault. Yeah, she just but, she just wanted to, she just wanted to get paid, man. Yeah, and don't we all? Yeah, <laughs> that's why we're here. That's Hello, all of our out. sponsors that we have. No, just I can't believe the Twilight episodes are doing so well. Why? Do you by the way, on? by the way, please check out our Twilight reviews because those have, for some reason, have been pretty hot. <laughs> Apparently, there are Twilight book very recently released, so that's yeah. probably it. I don't think that's what it is. I always, I always knew that in a way we were going to have a Twilight Renaissance. I always saw it coming, and uh, yeah, I, I wish it would never. Gonna... I wish it would have never happened, folks. Why? You know what? No, I let, let me enjoy this review, okay? <laughs> I, I, I've spent several hours talking about films that I don't like. Buddy the Elf. Buddy the um, Elf. He, he's such a fucking positive person. Like, it, right when he gets to New York, like, he, you, like there's a, like, a little montage of yeah. shit that happens to him, and he just makes the best out of everything. Like, <laughs> uh, a raccoon attacks him, I think, at one point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would, he always yeah. gets hit by a car, gum. He eats gum. That scene where he wa- he's he walks by a, a cafe and there's a sign that says "World's Best Cup of Coffee," and he walks in and he goes, "Congratulations, you made it!" And then he just walks out, <laughs> like. And they go back later in the movie. Yeah, and it's like, and isn't it great? She's like, it sounds, it tastes like a really crappy cup of coffee. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be the world's best coffee. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know. It's a, uh, uh when I was rewatching it right now, something that I didn't know that I didn't like caught on on the first time is like there's so much that is happening without the movie telling you. Like there's just a lot of showing and not telling. Like for example, when they show the 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 origin of how he got into the North Pole, like like oh Santa shows up to, to this orphanage, he's t- he's putting the presents. The baby sees a present in the bag. He walks. He he crawls out. He crawls into the bag. Like all the whole, that whole scene is done with no dialogue. And you just you're just following it, like, and that's funny on any language. And and I don't know, just I like when movies do that. Like, it's very simple, and it really stays with you because you, even though there is narration in the movie, they they didn't need narration for the setup. Like, it's just just watch, and you immediately get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like how the movie doesn't waste any time. It's a short movie. It's 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 like a, an hour and thirty minutes, mm-hmm. but like I said, it doesn't waste any time. They show you immediately uh, how, how he got to the North Pole. Immediately, he leaves. Immediately, he meets the dad. It, it doesn't take the whole movie for him to meet the dad. He meets him immediately, and the whole movie is actually them trying to get along, mm-hmm. which is better than, you know, oh, the whole movie is him trying to find his dad and him having adventures along the way. No, he meets yeah. him immediately, and then they just work him through it. It, it. it makes the relationship and the dynamic more real, I think. Well, also, I believe uh, his dad's played by John Keane, if I'm not mistaken. James Caan, yeah. James Caan, I'm sorry. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, isn't he like this like hot-tempered uh, Italian gangster in another movie? Um, what's it called? What's it called? Um, the Godfather? Yes, that one. Or The Godfather, or the Godfather Part 2. No, which one? He's not in The Godfather Part 2. What's wrong with you? Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, so he plays like this hot-tempered Sonny. So John Favreau was like, who the fuck else can I get to? Like, who's going to be the perfect opposite? Like, the perfect fucking foil, polar yeah. opposite to Buddy. Mm, Sonny from The Godfather is probably as close as you're going to get. Um, funny thing, though, when uh, when he contacted James, uh, James initially said, I'll do it, but I can't be as- associated with something so childish. So all his copies of the script, the movie was called Elk. Okay. Again, another little fun fact. Yeah, 
All his comments are scripted elk. Okay, sounds a little Kermit like, Yeah, but okay. I mean, he, he's sunny. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> to me, also he's also that uh, dude with the broken legs of misery. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. To me, he's the guy from misery. So. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, um, but yeah, I, I, I think they're ba- they, they balance each other out really well, and the movie is just very, very positive. Like it's got it's got such like a good positive energy behind it. Like, uh, and they kind of take things on a turn. Like th- there are things that you could kind of expect are going to happen, but then they don't. Like for example, when uh, James Khan finds out that he, that is his son, and he tells his new wife. The wife is not like you had a kid with another woman. No, she's like she, she's like, oh really? You have another kid? That's amazing! Like, let's meet him. Yeah, and like yeah, like that dynamic, like that could have been an extra side plot to make the movie longer and make it more complicated. But no, they know that the truth rests in simplicity, and the mm-hmm. fun does as well. And the relationship with the, within her and uh, Buddy is also very nice. You know. He starts. He starts to make breakfast, but he only knows how to make spaghetti and just add syrup to it. And she eats it, and she's happy eating it because she's like, "Yeah, <laughs> fine, let's do it." Like I should never, try. <laughs> yeah, like she's never hostile to, to, towards him, even though she's like, she, you know, he represents uh, a kid that he, that he's that her husband had with another woman. But she's like, "Oh, well, that's part of your past, whatever." You know. Yeah. I like how how they they, they didn't make that a really like difficult deal in the movie. That's true. Not even the brother. The brother is a little bit of a jerk. I think one part of the movie, but yeah, at first, but, then, but because he's a kid, not because yeah. he's you know mean. But but like right after that, like he begins to like uh, play with Buddy. They joke. They become friends. You know, they have that amazing snowball fight scene that I fucking love to this day. <laughs> yeah. That was the first time little Eddie lost his shit. I think I was like in fourth grade. They showed it to us. Um, they showed it to us uh, in our classroom, and when he nails that last snowball, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That was the first time I ever broke as a child and laughed like so hard. I couldn't breathe. I may have gotten in trouble for that, but I remember that scene and I could never hold it together because it's so funny. That, again, that's one of the few times that they do use CGI, but I mean, but it's scene, seamless. It yeah. fits the humor of that scene. Yeah. Well, also, I think the way they kind of shoot it where there's a slight delay in the frame makes it look almost real. Like it's time delayed. Like, yeah. Okay. Just keep throwing them like crazy y'all just like run really slow and we're gonna just like make this all mesh yeah and also um there's a couple of for example there's a scene where they're being pelted by snowballs and they're standing behind a rock and elf tells the tells michael um make some snowballs and the camera moves so to just you know face michael and he's just having trouble making one and by the time they turn back he like buddy has a crap (laughs) time (laughs) <laughs> like, like you know that in that scene they just cut and you know he they brought him like a bunch, but because of how it's shot, <laughs> it's uh you really believe that he just has them like ready. Well, because Buddy, like, it's like oh shit, he's no he 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 picked up a thing or two in those twenty four years that he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. But uh, yeah. there's another there's another real world famous scene I want to talk about, and it's the the arguably the scene of the movie. It, it, it's the I am your father. No scene. It's okay. the I'm gonna make you an offer that you can't refuse. Scene. Gemma, you sit on the throne of lies. <laughs> see, weirdly, I wouldn't call that the scene of the movie. Really? I think. See, uh, Elf is an endlessly quotable movie. Yeah. It really is. You sit yeah. on a throne of lies. I just like smiling. Smiling's my favorite. Um, Santa, oh my God! Um, uh, what was the other one? Um, oh shit! What was the one? Um, the fake the, uh, the the scene where the dad's fake singing and then they all start singing and then you know that's the right? one. Um, I'm a cotton head and ninny muggins. Uh, it, it's, got, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's got a ton of of, of, of really good lines. To me, the scene of the movie is Santa. Oh my God! Like that's that's the <laughs> really that's that that's the scene that pops up into your mind. I think uh, you see you, you see on a throne of lies is like a good meme quote. You know, you you mm-hmm. can you can quote it. You you can do all that. To me, the scene that if I got to reduce the whole film to just eight seconds is is the scene of uh, <laughs> of uh, Santa. Oh my God! I know him. I know him. <laughs> um, it's just hard not to and. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a great scene when the Santa like chases him. Like <laughs> apparently they apparently they had to do that scene in only like one take because they yeah. couldn't like rebuild everything. But they didn't have the time or the budget to rebuild the whole set. So they're like, look, guys, we get yeah. one shot, go. Yeah. So that's why there's it's, so much like of them wrestling and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, like I said, endlessly quotable. Uh, uh, again, uh, I'm back. Okay, so the week there's a scene. <laughs> Don't worry about it, folks. <laughs> Shut up. Don't worry about it. Don't question it. We're doing this. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> Fucking, we're doing it live. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, endlessly quotable. I don't think you see on a throne of lies is the quote of the movie though. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm gonna stick with with, with Santa. Oh my god. Um, but like I said, I'm not discrediting you see on a throne of lies. It's a it's a good it's a good scene. I think I, I think the scene that everyone sleeps on is the scene where he's forced to work at the at the shipping uh, basement. Oh, the the, the mail room. Yeah, in the mail room, and he gets drunk <laughs> with one of the with one of the guys, <laughs> and then they start dancing. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> like like that's a great scene. I I, I, I completely forgot about that that scene existed. Um, you, yeah. you know, you know, there's one guy. Do you remember one of the guys he talks to? Maybe it's the guy that's drinking. But he asks him, "How old are you?" And the guy says, "I'm 26." 26. Which, yeah. Which clearly he's like in his 40s. Yeah. And some fucking exec like had the balls to tell John Favreau, "You know, he looks too old to be 26, right?" And Favreau just looks at him and is like, "Yeah, that's the fucking joke." <laughs> Really, because you I felt know really how to depressed. direct. Really, uh, because I felt really depressed when watching that scene. Because like, <laughs> he said, "I'm 26 and I haven't made anything from my." <laughs> Shut up! I just turned 27. That, that, oh, that's God. not helping. Oh God! Oh God! Yep. Fry. Okay. Next. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, Elf. Elf is a great time, man. And it's mm. uh, it's it's funny. It's heartwarming. It it really gets you into the into the Christmas spirit. And it's it's always nice to go back and see someone that you know now is still very much a talented person that that, that is still working. And I, I'm talking, of course, about Fabro. But mm. it's it's just cool to see, you know, that this is a project that he thought of and that mm-hmm. he worked on and that he released and. You know, when you're looking back at someone's history and at someone's career, like I said, this is the movie that you kind of want in your resume. That's both yeah. a critical and a commercial success. And that is still revisited every Christmas. This is the Michael Bublé Christmas album in movie form. Like people just <laughs> people just return to it every year. We forget it exists during the entire year and then we just return to it. Mm-hmm. Like we just, we just, uh, we just pick it. We just pick find right that up. big... Yeah, we find that big ice block. We, you know, put a heater on it, and then we get it again, and then we put it back into the ice for the rest of the year. And that's not a bad thing. I think oh. Elf is, like I said, I think Elf is great. Well, I think that um, I noticed for Elf is the kind of movie that any director would happily, you know, that's the feather in their cap. You know, that's like, yeah, remember Elf, and then pitch whatever new project you want to do. Yeah, like uh, I don't think I don't think Fabro is embarrassed of this at all. Like oh, I think he probably fuck no. Yeah. I mean, I, I I think he sometimes forgets to mention that he made Satura, but other than that, he he's pretty proud of Elf. I think uh, Satura is good. I think I think that movie slept on. Like I think I think it's very much uh, a worthy successor to Jumanji, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, this movie, I think, one of the biggest I guess uh, compliments I can give it is on my birthday we set a TV outside and we watched it. Not me and Nikki. Uh, me and Nikki. My two parents that are in their fifties. My two sisters that are in their thirties, my <laughs> nephews that are like two of them, the they're they're below the age of ten, and yeah. my my niece who's uh, who's twelve, thirteen, a age. Yeah. And the point being is all these people of all these different ages, you know, different you know ethnicities and whatnot. And my in laws and my brother in law. Yeah. We all watched it and laughed our asses off, <laughs> and we were all. And you don't understand. That's rare. That my family can sit down and we all really watch a movie and joke and laugh, but we did it because yeah. Elf is able to reach that many people. It's short but still enthralling. You it you want to watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Um, and I man, props to everyone involved in this film. Um, Will Ferrell at one point he was really worried that this film was going to fail because this was not a middle of the ground movie. This was either going to bomb or it was going to be a fucking hit, and he was yeah. genuinely worried about it. He he was scared walking around uh, in New York City in yellow ties because he thought, is this how my career dies or is this how my career lives? Which yeah. <laughs> we all know what happened. 
Yeah. And the guy's still around. I mean, I I heard that he turned down making a sequel. $29 million contract. $29 million fucking dollars to do a sequel. And he said, no. Thank you, Will Ferrell. Thank you. You know what? It probably wouldn't have worked. This Not might be... Time. This might be a lightning strike once kind of thing. I they got lucky once. I don't know if they could do it a second time. Yeah, I mean, and you know, poor Fabro. You know, he's he's right now. He's probably just swimming in money, so, <laughs> swimming in <laughs> Disney money, which is probably the best money you can swim on. And uh, Scrooge McDuck levels of money right there. <laughs> that's how. That's exactly how I pictured him. Just like you know, jumping into like a, a pool of coins. What would yeah. Warner Brothers have to do to steal him away for a Batman movie? I don't, it's Superman not gonna movie? happen. It's not how, gonna. How happen. much do you think they'd have to give him? <laughs> not more than $29 million. I can guarantee you that. What if they give him the keys to DC? They were like, look, you know how you did like two movies over there? Here are the keys to the whole shop. Have fun. The thing is that Fabro not only directed just Iron Man and Iron Man 2, he, he, he produced the Avengers. He produced like a bunch of the... The Lion Infinity King, Wars. if I'm not mistaken, also. The he Lion, directed the Lion King. He directed the Lion King and... Which, and Jungle Book. Mm, Jungle Book was better, but Lion King... Mm, yeah, yeah. Li- li- Lion King was a... Pas- was a um, how do I say this nicely for the kids? Um, Shit show? Self-tickle. <laughs> Sounds like a, something Elf the, uh, we, we, the Elf would say. Well, we got, okay, do you know John... Okay, this is not part of the podcast. You know how John <laughs> Cena, the wrestler? like Totally. So one of his signature moves is called the five-knuckle shuffle, right? Like he I does know, this. I, yeah. then, I'm aware. Uh, yeah, so in Europe, apparently a five-knuckle shuffle is another word for wanking. <laughs> I assume he didn't, but now we all know. Okay. Well. Uh, uh, and we're back. Sorry, folks. We had to uh, cut something. So I really like Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> so how? So what would you rate this? Uh, Elf. It's a stone cold scale of one to ten. It's a solid nine. If it's a letter grade, it has to be an A. This is maybe the only modern classic that we've both been alive for. I think. Besides maybe Home Alone, as far as like a Christmas movie. You mean Christmas, yeah. Yeah, like th- this movie is a necessary holiday, you know, film. Like you, you can't yeah. avoid it. Yeah, but in a in a good way, in a in a non um, in a non uh, you know film student judging you uh, yeah. kind of way. Like this is a movie for everyone. I truly <laughs> believe that this is this, this is how much I know that it's a movie for everyone. My mother and. If you remember this from the FBA days, you know that I always use my parents as like the barometer of like, you know, the everyday movie going audience, you know, they don't care who the silver surfer is, mm-hmm. you know, they're just like, oh, silver guy. Okay. Cool. <laughs> like, go with it. Just go with it. Like they don't care. Um, my mother hates with a passion. He, she hates Will Ferrell. Like she fucking hates him. She thinks it's not funny at all. This is the only movie that I got her to like watch completely and like enjoy. She liked it. Yeah, she liked hey, it. Hey, okay, but, but that's because I cannot believe how much of a sour person you can be to watch this movie and not like it. Uh, yeah, I completely fucking agree with you on that, man. Yeah, um, simple as that. Like this is this is likable. This is the one of the most likable movies I like to see. Like it's mm-hmm. it's like if you hated Winnie the Pooh. Like look, why? man. All I'm saying is that he was hoarding all the honey in the in the hundred acre woods, hundred acres in that woods, hoarding all the honey. He's kind of a monster. If you really think Nobody that. else wanted honey. It was just him. What if he killed so all really, the other bears? Who's he hurting? They're they're, they're not real bears, they're man. <clears throat> they're they're not real bears. They're they're plushies. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, but uh, anyway, um, I mean, you obviously like it. You have a shirt. <laughs> I my shirt that actually says son of a nutcracker. Like I I really like this movie. Um, um Jesus, is there anything else, man? This it's just a great film. Like there's nothing for me to like bomb it or shit talk. It's just a great movie that I would recommend to anyone and everyone. You know, take a shot every time Buddy does something really awkward. Uh you'll be hammered by the end of the movie, but like the happy kind of hammered. Totally. I remember one more thing I was gonna say. Um I think we've discussed this also. I don't mean for not to have as well. There are certain movies that are just great overall. And then there are movies that are good, but you have to turn off your brain. Like Transformers, for example. Mm-hmm. The first one's a good movie. You have to turn off your brain, though. You know what I mean? Totally. 
This is the opposite of that, where it's a great movie, but there's no, no guilty pleasure in it. It's just totally. a good fucking movie that I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that didn't like this movie. Totally. That's that. That's what I was going to say. When I watched this movie, I was still working at the university and you had told me to watch it. And I bought the movie. I, I bought it before watching it. I bought it on Blu-ray on a, on a, on a Black Friday sale. I think I got it for like $4. Shit, and, that's a good deal. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, I finally watched this. And I was sitting at work and I was talking with some friends. Actually, Manda was there. And hey. and, we, and we were talking and, and, and I told them, like, I haven't seen this movie, but I have it. I'm going to watch it. And they told me, like, to fucking watch it. It's so funny. And and that and that's something that the the I, I watched it the next day I came in and, and and they were like, how was it? I'm like, it, it was fucking great, man. <laughs> it was so go. funny. Yeah. So glad you liked it so much, man. I love it, man. And I and in a way, I don't think I would have watched it if you hadn't told me to watch it. Like honestly. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great movie. I don't I don't know how I could rate it. I I, I would also give it like a nine out of ten. You know, it's mm-hmm. it it's succeed it, it sets itself for 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 success and it achieves it really i have i don't have anything bad to say, to say for this movie you i'm probably not gonna watch it for like the rest of the year i'll probably just watch it again when it's christmas time mm-hmm. but that's what it's there for and it succeeds in that so yeah. i can't really fault it for that Agreed. and give it a give it a nine out of ten if you're listening to us on youtube you can follow us on any of our links down below if you listen to us via podcast please like and subscribe we greatly appreciate it thanks for joining us if you'd like to hear more about our thoughts on movies, go to therollback.net. I've been Chema. And I've been Eddie. And this was The Rollback.